This demonstration is a simple happy path scenario that allow us to familiarize ourselves with some of the features of the virtual train uh, demonstration. So this UI is the live data mart view of what's happening within the event processing platform. And, and we have a number of tabs up here that we can select from. And as well, there's a clock up here in the upper right corner. This is going to tell us what time it is within the simulation. We operate based on uh, time compression. So one second in real life means one minute within the simulation. Currently, nothing's running, so I'm going to start a new simulation. And we have a number of test cases defined here, but the one in particular we're interested in is this one. So I'm going to start this. And the first thing that will happen at 4 in the morning is the planning application is going to schedule the trips for the day. Um, and then about 10 minutes before the departure, it's going to assign the train sets onto a trip. So this train set is now planned. And now at the departure time, the trip will actually depart. So I can select this trip and zoom in on what's happening here. And it's going to show us a number of pieces of information about this trip. So here we have the list of stops that the train is going to pass through. We have the set of train sets that are attached to that trip. In this case, we have two train sets assigned. And then we can see any alerts for the trip. We're not going to have any alerts in this simulation because it's a happy path. Now, the train sets is interesting in this particular simulation because what happens when the train arrives in Rotterdam is it's going to have an additional train set attached onto it. And then when it reaches Amsterdam, that third train set is going to get dropped off. So you can see we have two right now. And when we reach Rotterdam, the, the UI will regenerate, and we now have three train sets assigned. So this train set view allows you to look at what's the composition of the trip. Um, we can see a summary of the seating availability in each block. So we can see in first class we have 34 out of 48 seats uh, occupied. And the color of these blocks will change based on the occupancy. We also have an indication of what facilities are available. So you can see this is a toilet. Um, and then further down we have a cafe available in this coach. And each train set is then represented on here. So that's the first and the second. And then here's the third. We can look at the stops view as well. And this will give us an indication of where the train is going to stop. Um, so we can see we've already departed the first few stations. And we're currently inbound into Schiphol. So you can see there's a, a left column, a center column, and a right column. In the left column, that's the arrival time, and the first row of that is the schedule. The second is business events calculating when it estimates the train will arrive, and then the third will be the actual arrival. So you see the stations we haven't arrived yet only have two, but the ones we have previously passed through already have three. The departure time works the same way, and then the last column tells us what platform the train will arrive and depart from. So the estimated time that's being calculated by business events is actually quite sophisticated because it'll look at a number of pieces of information. If the train lingers at a station and doesn't depart on time, it will take that into account and increment the estimated time accordingly. Likewise, if the train moves slower over a section of track than it should be, that will cause an increase in the estimated time as well. And if the system is aware of alerts that are going on, uh, so for example, uh, speed restrictions over certain segments of track or delays or cancellations of certain stops, it will take that into account to the estimated time as well. So we're arriving at our final uh, destination for this trip. So we've now arrived. We arrived one minute early, which is always good. And that trip is now terminated. So the return trip is scheduled for 1044. So about 10 minutes before, the train sets are going to get assigned. And they'll then manifest themselves on this map. So a trip doesn't have any physical manifestation until a train set uh, gets assigned to it. So we can see we're now assigned. We can select that trip, and we can see we're planned. Uh, we have an indication of our headway status, so we're currently on time. And then along with that, we have some pieces of information assigned uh, that will come out of the GPS uh, installation on the train set. So we have the speed, the current compass bearing, and the distance it's traveled from the start point. So this is the trip view. We also have a train set view, which is slightly different because it gives you a view of the actual hardware. So you can see we have two dots that are kind of following one another here. They're not actually tailgating one another. These are the two train sets that are composing the trip that we're doing at the moment. So if I select one of these, we can see this is train set one of two, uh, and then the other would be two of two for that particular trip. Uh, and now we've attached a third one, so we now actually have a three of three. So in addition to this view, we're able to do some lightweight analytics as well. So these are all driven off of live data mark queries. But if I needed to do my own, I would be able to do that as well. So I can do trips, 
trip ID, um, last updated and status, and validate that query, and then do a live view of that. And this will update as it goes through. And finally, we have an alerts view as well. And again, we have no alerts in this scenario, uh, but we could create an alert or view an alert using this UI. So we'll have a look at a more advanced use case. This demonstration shows more advanced features of the system. In particular, I'm going to introduce alerts into it to cause delays uh, to particular trips. So I'm going to start a new simulation, which is going to be a happy path sim simulation again. And it's a half day of services between or Dordrecht and Amsterdam. So the planning application will first schedule all the trips for the day, and there should be a fair number of them come up here. And then our first trip is at 5.12 in the morning. So about 10 minutes before that, we should get a train set assigned, which has happened. And we should get another one for 5.20 as well, opposite, operating in the opposite direction. And these will start moving shortly. So these services are now underway. And then the subsequent services will operate at their appropriate times. So I'm going to go to the alerts view here and I'm going to create a new alert. I'm going to apply it to the 2990 service, which will just be the northbound services. I can select a particular trip, but I'm going to apply it to all the trips and I'm going to leave that blank. And I'm going to create a weather alert. So weather, minor delays, uh, delays between Rotterdam and Delft due to high winds. And the approximate delay is going to be about 30 minutes. And in the table here, we have a list of the stops for this particular service. And what I can do is I can apply speed limits on each segment of track here. So I'm going to put a speed limit of 0.5 from black to central, and then 0.25, and 0.25 again. And I'll create that alert. So you can see the alert has appeared now in this table. I can go back to trips here. And we can see now we've highlighted the segment of track and a number of stations that currently have alerts applied to them. So I can select the station and we can see the trips that are scheduled to go through and we can see the alerts that are associated with that station. Now, if you notice, this trip has a little exclamation point icon on it. And this indicates that an alert has been associated with this particular train. We can go in and see the weather alert. And we can see we have an increasing delay that's happening here. And this is because the speed that the train is traveling at is less than the design for the particular segment of track. In fact, that's because we put a speed limit on it. Normally, this train would be operating about 80 kilometers an hour on this segment of track. And Business Events is using this information and recalculating the subsequent stops and the estimated time for each one of these. So you can see it's already determined that uh, the Den Haag arrival is going to be 21 minutes late, and this is incrementing as the train gets delayed going through the segment of track. And you can see here we have a number of delays being applied uh, as the trains go through that section, that section, and we've also highlighted trains that are going to be impacted by this uh, with this little icon. If we go back to the alerts view here, we see we have two other alerts that have been generated. They're both called block delay, minor, minor delays. This is business events looking at the knock-on effect of a delayed trip impacting subsequent trips. So train sets don't operate in isolation. They'll operate one service in one direction and then turn around and return again. In this particular scenario, these outbound trains are being delayed, so this is having a knock-on effect on the return trips that are coming back again. So business events is creating an alert for these trips and then highlighting these trips as being delayed due to these uh, late running inbound services. So if we go back to trips view here, we can see um, we can see the knock on effect of this on the return trips and the estimated delays that are occurring because of this. So you can see very quickly that even a minor um, disruption to the system gets reflected in here very easily and very quickly. So I can go back to the alerts view again and I can clear this weather alert. I can go in and say, is normal and then select clear here and that alert will now be deactivated. So the weather alert has been cleared. If I go back to trips, you can see the segment of track in those stations have resumed to normal and the subsequent trips are no longer subject to delays, but the ones that have already been delayed by that alert are now still operating with their delays intact.
I can select the alert here and it's changed the icon to indicate that the alert still impacted the trip, but it's now been cleared.